I think for South Africa, we have challenges, yes, but I'm not going to stick on them. Um, what I want to share with you is where we are and where we are going, and also taking um, Africa with us. Um, I think that's the, 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 the task that uh, we are giving, giving ourselves. So if we look, uh, as Imane uh, said, um, Africa is fully 54 countries, but if we look at the population, 1.2 billion, and we have the youngest population in the world, but we have 158 repositories registered on the DOR. And also, if you look, South Africa on its own, we have 33 repositories, mainly from um, higher education institutions and some of our science councils. And then on data repositories, you will notice we have only about five, of which majority are from South Africa. Basically, more or less driven by the appetite for um, uh, competitive research um, outputs, which uh, some of our institutions are known for. And um, so, if we look at the way I come from, which is NRF, we are the anchor for uh, knowledge production in the country because we are the funder and the only government institutions which gets uh, um, about four billion a year to support the research initiatives in the country. And we also host um, most of the highly global competitive research organizations, which you will see in one of my slides, including the SKA, for those that are familiar with that project. And so as, a, as NRF, you will see we are anchored uh, from, it's, we derive our mandate from, gov from the ministries and also the agencies that support research, like your Medical Co Research Council, Water Research Council, etc. And on the fourth layer, that's where you, we play most of um, um, our funding with higher education and also the other research agencies in the country. So we play an important role in driving the open access um, initiatives as the big player or a big brother in the country. And if, uh, just for the number, I think we hosted Berlin 2011, and after Berlin 2011, you notice our institutions became very open access minded. And some of them have now mandates. I think we have about 15 or so mandates, uh, which derive or force academics to comply with certain things um, as, as, as dictated by the open access principles. So our, our repositories, uh, some of them are gaining ground in terms of um, also advocating the rankings. We, our university competes um, among themselves and also they want to see themselves in the global ranking. For example, the UCT, which is one of our uh, elite institutions, I think last year they were ranked fourth in the BRICS and 171 in the uh, world university rankings. So they play big and so we have also tried to make that bigness in terms of they should support open access. And so if we look, this is our model uh, as the National Research Foundation for things that we fund as an agency. So we require all ETDs that um, uh, are funded for postgraduate masters and doctoral to be in our uh, workflows, as well as um, journal articles, conference proceedings, book chapters, books, uh, which also are derived from some of the uh, established researchers, I'm talking of the academia, etc. So if you look, um, our systems, they flow into the global uh, ETD portal from the diagram there, and the embargo issues are also applicable, uh, particularly with the NIPMO, which is our agency for um, uh, uh, intellectual property, we recognize their role and we as uh, open access advocates, we tell the users how to manage uh, that, that, um, the IP requirements of the, the, of the government. And so you will see we are trying now to actually have uh, uh, repositories, particularly for NRF, that will um, pipeline books that are open access, journal articles, etc., and data sets. And you can see our linkages with the 
how we are registered for us to be uh, harvested by the global harvesters. And this is the workflow for data sets uh, across the, um, the funded outputs. And um, you can see we haven't really uh, started, but the, what I've, I've done in the past was to go through the universities giving uh, talks and also um, um, asking the, some of our research chairs to be our, 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 our ambassadors in those institutions. So there is always, uh, I think we are gaining um, um, uh, some recognition in terms of what we are looking for. In, in terms of uh, data sets. And as we speak, I think uh, yesterday and the day before, uh, there was a sitting uh, where we are working with the um, European Union to drive our open, open science framework, which, is, which angers on open access, et cetera, and also open data. And this is, like I said in the previous um, um, uh, input that I gave to the other committee, we recognize that our equipment that we fund as government must be the areas where we must actually attract data sets. So going forward, we are going to give a mandate that when you are using any data that is derived from such equipment, that data must see itself in the public domain. And if at any reason you want to embargo, we'll give you that uh, permission, but we we'll want to know when you are going to release your data. But it must be uh, supported by an IP requirement that must be registered for you not to have your data in the open access domain. So these are principles that we are going to uh, put in place as we try and, and, and attract data sets, which are more, more or less useful for knowledge production in our own domain as Africa. This is just to give you a, a project that we have worked with Patli Kua and my, my colleague here, um, Andre Bolini. Uh, he came to South Africa in 2016 and we had a workshop with all the uh, universities and other science players there and we also had some African colleagues from other countries who participated. For us we wanted to uh, sort of uh, conscientize our communities for them to register current uh, projects which is your masters and doctoral which will then lead to completed research projects. The full text this is in the repositories but already you can see the numbers are growing and we are all currently on a red roadmap to uh, initiate um, all universities to comply with this requirement for current research projects. And um, we have had uh, discussions with um, the, the vice chancellors for research, uh, and, et cetera, and directors of research, including the libraries who manages the workflow to go uh, to be on the same table such that um, these initiatives can uh, become um, fruitful. And if I can show you, so what we do, this is the current, and, uh, current research projects database, which then becomes what we have here, which is our uh, national ETT um, uh, aggregator. So on this platform, our students, our researchers have access to full text, uh, which is derived from the other database. So going forward, I think uh, universities have started to use this repository as a, a reference platform for those that are doing their, um, uh, uh, who will be starting to write their proposals. They are supposed to, to say, I, I, I acknowledge that my work has not been copied, or if someone has done a similar report or a project, I acknowledge that mine is different in this way. So it's some of the universities have started to implement that so that they really comply with the plagiarism um, principles, etc. And this is our own uh, South African data archive, which we have hosted since uh, before the, uh, the talk of open data. Uh, this, uh, I think they started this project a long time ago. Uh, before I joined NRF. So this is going to be home for 
data sets that are NRF funded. And for our grantees who are sitting at the higher education institutions, where the home uh, institution might not have a, a data repository. So we require them to deposit uh, into our own um, archive. So basically, if it is big data, which we can't archive, there will be another home uh, in the, um, the DIRISA, which is a national uh, project also underway to support big science. So for us, we are more interested in data sets that supports publications. But the big brother, which is Teresa, are interested in all data that supports science. And this is our national equipment database, as I said. So basically what we have tried to do is this um, equipment uh, should be um, cited when you have written a paper deriving data from them, you must cite the equipment. So this is where the, we want to utilize the ORCID, et cetera, across, such so that when we are tracking who has used what, we will be able to quantify the return of investment in what the government is putting across. And like I said, the equipment is free to all Africans who can use them. And in case you don't know, South Africa was the highest number of um, postgraduate students from the rest of the continent. So we assume, and we also find other South Africans besides South Africans. Uh, so the system is able to produce um, across the continent, etc. And this is just the conceptual model of what we are trying to do with ORCID and how it will assist us in tracing all the out outputs from a DMP to the research outputs and the types, and how we are going to play along with the DOI, et cetera, and link all these things to the grants that we issue out. Um, on top of our strategy for open access or um, open science, the government has put um, lots of investment uh, in digitization. Because what we are realizing is we have a lot of resources that are in archives that are not um, publicly available. So we want to harness all these collections and make them available for research. So this is a project which Daisy started with the Canic Corporation, of which some of you who know Nancy Magoen from MIT was the, our trainer. I remember I went through the training myself in digitization of um, 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 functions in South Africa. So we have uh, a register. So all projects that we identify for as valuable research collections, the, they are registered on this collection and we track at what state, how, uh, how far they've gone with their digitization. And so what we have government has put in place, we have a digitization training center which is hosted by one of our university. And uh, just recently, we are going to establish another digitization center in another province. So we are going to have digitization nodes in all the provinces, so that these uh, digitization nodes will capacitate human development, particularly to our librarians, because digitization was not offered as a course in any of the library schools uh, curriculum. But recently, uh, the University of Cape Town is now offering a master's degree in digitization or digital curation. And this is just some of the databases that are data-driven, that are not registered on the end of the directors. That, that, but I'm sure HSRC's uh, database, data database is registered with data site. But you can go in and see the collections that have they've grown over the years. And we also have the UCT, University of Cape Town, data, first, uh, uh, data um, repository, of which this is where we have learned some of the skills that we want to apply to uh, data librarians. So working together with them, I think we might come up with a solution as we really need some training in uh, research data management in the country. And this is also a database that is government-oriented information, which comes through one of uh, our, uh, the state's SA, 
so you, these data, uh, data sets are available to students, etc., and also other researchers. Just to mention, uh, this is the big project for Africa. Like I've said, we are taking our, uh, our African brothers along with us. So just to mention, these are the NRF National Infrastructure Platform or research platforms that work globally with their counterparts in other countries. So these are data-driven agencies and um, they generate a lot of data. In the past, we didn't have a data policy as an agency, so they were able to share their data uh, or hosting their data outside the country, but for some reason, because of um, um, specific um, uh, subject specialization in their work. Uh, but going forward, we want to make sure that their data is available in the country, etc. Right. This is a project that is funded by the South African government, and we are working together with Core Data um, just to do a survey of what needs to happen in terms of um, data policy in Africa. So this project, for those that will be coming to Botswana at the Core Data Conference, you will be able to hear more about it. So it's focusing on policy, infrastructure, capacity building, and incentives for within and so like i said it is focused the south african government realized we couldn't do it alone because this uh, the square kilometer array ska project uh, involves uh, other countries uh, botswana ghana kenya madagascar mauritius mozambique Zamb zambia and namibia etc so that's why we the government realized they needed to coach the, our, counter, our counter, counterparts on what we expect in terms of uh, research data management. So this project, I hope, will provide uh, what the government is looking for, um, etc. So these are other projects that also involve uh, funding from the South African government with, and working together with other African countries, uh, etc. And that's why we want uh, Africa to have data policies, etc., at national level. And so, so far, these are the countries that um, have participated in the process for the OASP. You can see there in Kenya, Uganda, Madagascar, Botswana, and South Africa. So for South Africa, a white paper is, in, is currently being um, um, written, which will um, also become the procedures that will follow in terms of data archiving. And for African entrants, uh, my colleague, I think here, Omo, you can ask him, he is aware of this project, but this is how we look at um, the whole work that is going to happen and in terms of sharing networks and sharing any proceeds of knowledge outputs within this context. So uh, if you have any questions on this one, you can ask my colleague uh, Omo from Nigeria, who is participating in this project. So I'm not going to dwell much, but you can read these ones as you have access to the, to the protocol. Just to say, this is going to be the framework on which our open access and open data, open science um, uh, initiatives are going to be anchored on, and we are gladly uh, help, uh, grateful to the EU for sponsoring this project, um, and, and I'm sure we will benefit from the, the, the expertise that we are provided from with from the EU. So with these small slides, I would like to invite you to Botswana uh, for the Core Data General Assembly, and of which if you are from Kua, we might also ask you to pass by uh, in, 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 in Pretoria, Johannesburg, or Pretoria, South Africa. Thank you. <laughs>